Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is Little Bookish Teacher, and today is World Oceans Day or International Oceans Day, and I am going to share some books that feature whales, and one book that is kind of adjacent to that theme. So I have four books to share with you. The first picture book that I have is Charlie's Whale by Libby Gleason and illustrated by Hannah Somerville. This is about Charlie who loves the sea, loves ocean animals, but the animal that he loves the most are whales. And he spends a lot of time at the beach, at the aquarium, trying to see a whale. And he has this dream. He, he just, he wants that to happen. The whole book is beautifully illustrated to show and highlight that dream. And towards the end of the book, his family spend a day at the beach and he just spends the entire day, instead of playing and being in the ocean, he's just watching and waiting and hoping that by the end of the day, he'll get to see a whale. And it's absolutely beautiful. It has gorgeous illustrations. We learn little bits about different sea animals through the story as Charlie's talking about them. In terms of the text, it has really great use of verbs. It is definitely geared towards sort of younger primary school age children, but there are also varying sentence types and sentence structures, which make it a really good one to study as a mentor text. Then there is Walk of the Whales by Nick Bland. This was a book that was shortlisted last year for the CBCA Awards. And in this one, the story starts off when the whales all walk out of the ocean and start living on the land. People are amazed by, and initially it's, you know, this sensation, and then suddenly the realities of whales living on the land becomes really problematic for people. People just continue to think that it's a problem until one girl actually goes up to the whales and asks them, why did you originally leave the ocean? And they left the ocean because humans were treating it like a dumping ground. And so it is a book about environmental issues. It is a really wonderfully written story. And this book is a really great read aloud for younger readers. But if you wanted to pull apart the story and the message particularly behind it, it would be a really great one to study in older year levels. But I also just love the illustrations in this book. It's absolutely gorgeous. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. The next one is not really so much about the oceans, but it does feature a whale. And that is How to Put a Whale in a Suitcase. This is by Raul Nieto Guridi. It's not actually about the oceans at all. In fact, this is a story where you start reading it and you might think, oh yes, this is a book for younger readers. It's, it's not really, it's definitely more for older picture book readers. This is about someone who has to leave home quite suddenly and he has to pack his whale in a suitcase and he doesn't have a suitcase big enough for it. And we rapidly begin to realize that the whale is not a whale and it is symbolizing something else. This is a book that you would definitely unpack with older readers because that's where the message is. It explores themes of migration, of having to leave your home really suddenly and having to pack up your entire life and take it with you or what you can take with you and how do you even manage to do that. But it is a gorgeous little book. And then my whale adjacent story, this one does feature oceans, is Iceberg by Claire Saxby and Jess Rackleft. This one was actually a winner for the CBCA Awards and this one is an absolutely gorgeous story. It has the most lyrical, beautiful writing style and it is the life cycle of an iceberg and the life that is sustained in the Antarctic by this life cycle. It is a fantastic mentor text for studying simple compound and complex sentence structures. It has gorgeous use of verbs and adjectives, amazing illustrations. It is informative while also still being a narrative. And yes, we do see whales. It is an absolutely gorgeous book. This was one that I had originally received for review when it first came out. And then when I saw that it was on the CBCA shortlist, I was just so excited because it is incredibly written. So those are some recommendations for World Oceans Day. I'd love to know if you've read these books or if you're planning on reading any of them, or if you have another book that you love to read for World Oceans Day, feel free to share that title down below. If you want to let me know that you're here, but you don't leave a comment, feel free to leave a whale emoji. Otherwise, I hope that wherever you're in the world, you're staying safe and healthy, and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.